all know the media's compromise of mostly left-wing socialists and communists of varying degrees, but one thing this virus outbreak has really exposed is just how impressed and enamored our media is with communist China. They check it, verify it, and they'll let you in. Incredibly invasive. I don't know if it can happen in other parts of the world, though it is their way of tracing and tracking. They can then change your barcode, your <coughs> QR, to a yellow or red, and you could then go into self-isolation or government quarantine. That, I mean, that's incredible that they can, I mean, that's a level of surveillance, which obviously it does not ex uh, it does not exist here and and probably i think could right. not exist it's almost as if they're compiling a wish list we've seen articles and hosts boasting about china's allegedly amazing response to the coronavirus outbreak but here we have a cnn panel hosted by anderson cooper that seems to be straight up marveled by china's tyrannical surveillance state no doubt these people would all love china's dictatorial powers so that they could enact all their wildest policy dreams pertaining to things like climate change, nationalized health care, controlling the flow of information, and throwing out the capitalist system. They almost sound disappointed that we could never have a surveillance state like that here in the United States. Seriously, they can barely contain their excitement over the prospect. Make no mistake, a surveillance state like China can most definitely happen here in America. These people in the media would love nothing better than to shut all of us up. ABC News wasn't much better, touting the new technologies China is rolling out to trample on the privacy and natural human rights of its people. But this is a new normal, one that keeps watch everywhere. Local police boasting of new technology deployed. It's not clear if this experimental tech is a practical tool. You don't have anything to worry about. It's just the new normal. Right, because the main issue with this technology is if it's practical or not. I just want to point out, and maybe it's self-evident, especially to this audience, but I just want to point out the complete lack of criticism or outrage. We'll get right back to this communist takeover of our media, but first, I have a very important message about your retirement from Orion metal exchange. What will your savings in retirement look like once we've declared victory over the virus? With stocks already down 30% from their all-time highs, no one has the answers. Did you know that it took nearly eight years for the markets to recover after the 2008 housing bubble crash? Yet during the crash of 2008, gold and silver surged to all-time highs. Do you really have eight years to wait for a recovery? Many Americans use this little-known IRS qualified loophole that allows Americans to buy gold and silver with their retirement accounts. And the good guys at Orion Metal Exchange offer a no-fee transfer in as little as two days on most accounts. Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup all see gold soaring, forecasting $2,000 an ounce for gold. Some experts are calling for gold to double in the next year. Orion Metal Exchange is Consumer Affairs top-rated gold IRA dealer. At Orion, you get more precious metals for your money. Call today and request a free investment kit below. Mention Drone Tech Politics and get a free one ounce silver coin for qualified retirement account holders. Must be over 40 to qualify. Call 866-915-5053 and get your free investment guide today. At Orion, you get more precious metals for your money every day. That's incredible. China is an authoritarian state that tramples on people's human rights and is a country where they put religious minorities into forced labor camps. I mean, just compare their excitement over a communist authoritarian dictatorship further placing their boot on the throats of their people to the over-the-top hyperbolic way in which they cover Trump. These people in the Democrat Party and in the media, they want to fundamentally change this country and increasingly that looks like socialism or even communism. This virus outbreak provides the perfect vehicle to introduce it. And I think that's exactly why you're starting to see people in the media and in the Democrat Party asking for Biden to adopt Bernie socialist policies. Over at the SPEW, they're straight up asking Biden to use the virus outbreak to push for government-run health care. People are asking questions and they're concerned about the virus. This this implies some sort of political motivation, which is kind of gross. Over at MSDNC, the Democrat Party paid operative Chuck Todd claims the coronavirus outbreak boosts Bernie's socialist vision. This is the same guy that put on a Grammy Award winning performance when he was accused of politicizing the virus. None of this seems to match the facts. What, what facts are there that Democrats are doing this? Well, it seems like people are asking questions and they're concerned about the virus. This, 
This implies some sort of political motivation, which is kind of gross. Love. Name some names, sir. Well, uh, because this is just, look, it just feels like gaslighting. P please name some names. I'm, I'm a, we're all big. Well, we're all big people here. Name some names. There was the Bernie Sanders ideas, the Bernie Sanders proposals may be meeting their moment at a time when there is an appetite for government to be more involved. You had Bernie Sanders trumpeting a lot of ideas. The pandemic hits and suddenly the Bernie Sanders vision suddenly became uh, an answer for a lot of Americans. This, this implies some sort of political motivation, which is kind of gross. ABC and CBS News were no better as they went out of their way to stretch the truth in defense of the corrupt China tool, the World Health Organization. It's just very telling that when it comes down to defending their president or a communist authoritarian regime, they pick the communist authoritarian regime. Trump is threatening to pull U.S. funding from the World Health Organization, the WHO, sent out multiple coronavirus alerts earlier this year, in fact, declaring it a global health emergency back in January. The president largely dismissed those warnings. Mr. Trump claims the WHO failed. President is shifting blame for the spread of the coronavirus to the World Health Organization, saying it should have provided better warnings. See what I mean by stretching the truth? They know very well that the World Health Organization didn't declare an emergency until January 30th. Up until that point, they were telling the world not to worry about it because China said it's all good. Yes, a couple weeks later, the World Health Organization changed their tune. But let's not act like this was solid information that Trump had an entire month to process and respond to. They're also being very deceptive about the World Health Organization and withholding information so that they can paint them as a victim of the mean old orange man. Even CNN reported on the fact that many around the world are now questioning the legitimacy of the World Health Organization because of their close connections to China. ABC and CBS left that out of their reporting because that information might justify Trump's actions and reflect well on him as a leader. And we can't have that now, can we? That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button. It really helps the videos. Share and subscribe. If you subscribe, make sure to hit that bell notification. If you'd like to support this channel and you agree with my mission, please consider subscribing to me on one of these platforms. You can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back. Oh, <laughs> baby.